Welcome to a new episode in the Multiverse video series. Today, we're going to learn how to use versioning with datasets using the PINs package from R. Now, to give you some context of why this is interesting, let's take a look at the GitHub board. So uh, this is a board that you might already be fam familiar with. And uh, as part of the functionality of the PINs package, it allows you to store data sets either locally by caching them and providing easy access to those data sets. And it also allows you to share data sets with colleagues and friends by using what uh, we call boards. Now, one of the boards is GitHub. And basically, it allows you to in, uh, share data sets directly into GitHub, which it can be quite useful to uh, just basically share your reproducible research and uh, make use of other tools that uh, would allow you to try changes like version control. Now, up to, up to now, uh, basically, uh, Pins was installing um, data sets in different boards that may or may not support what we call versioning. And there was no way of really returning a specific versions from Pins. And if we take a look at the, um, at the Wikipedia page of GitHub, um, you can see you can see that GitHub uh, was designed to be a version control. So, for instance, whenever we go to uh, let's just take a look at a data set. So, whenever whenever you use pins with a data set, for instance, in this in this case, I have the Game of Thrones characters data sets or whatever. Uh, whenever you use pins, you will get uh, support for versioning. However, this doesn't mean that uh, the versions are available on pins. Um, this is changing with version 0 0.4. So in this case, we only have one version for this data set, uh, but we can probably find a couple other data sets that uh, have more versions. So what is changing in pins? Well, uh, now that uh, pin supports proper versions, you can use any of the boards that we you currently have uh, that we currently have support in pins with the addition of managing versions. Uh, so what I recommend doing is taking a look at the new uh, vignette on the pins website, pins.rstudio.com, and then try versioning. And under versioning, there's a few examples of how to use pins with versions. So the very first and most simple example is just to validate that you're downloading a version of a pin that you expected and that is well known. So let's take a look at this for instance. So suppose that we want to retrieve this data set. It really doesn't matter what it is. So we're just gonna retrieve it and pin it. So now we have a data set named home price indexes, which is this particular data set. And it happens to be just files uh, since it's a CSV file, but you, we could obviously load this file and why not? Now, uh, one of the new functionality that we have in pins is that we can actually uh, pass a signature equals true parameter with pin info. And what that would generate is the signature of this particular data set. And uh, a signature is just um, usually a character string that describes the data set in a very succinct way. So if you were to change absolutely anything on this particular data set, um, the signature would change. And this particular signature is what in uh, computer science we call the hash. So it's just a hash of the file. And uh, what you can do now is you can do something a bit more interesting, which is um, you can share this particular code. You can say uh, pin uh, the same data set, but then specify a signature. So if we were to run this, um, we're still creating a pin, which is what we expect. Uh, we're creating a pin for this particular data set. Um, however, if we were to share this in our reproducible research, um, if for whatever reason the underlying data set were to change, um, this uh, particular uh, signature would no longer be valid. So uh, suppose that we change uh, either, um, you know, suppose, suppose that we change this to, you know, suppose that the contents of this particular pin change to uh, google.com. And again, the URL wouldn't change, but the particular uh, contents could. So if we were to retrieve this particular thing, um, 
the signature, as you can see here, is not matching any longer. We could still retrieve the pin if we remove the signature, which in this case, uh, you know, it just succeeds, but it's not going to work if the uh, signature and the data set do not match. And again, we can, we can change the contents or we could also change the value of the signature. And again, the uh, data set breaks. Now, you could argue why this is useful. Well, uh, first of all, you might want to ensure that your users are using the same data set that you used. Um, so this is a pretty easy way of validating that that's the case and uh, otherwise failing if the signature changes. Right, so, so this is kind of like the experience that you get if you have a remote data set. You can create the signature as we did previously with pininfo and then validate against that signature whenever you uh, download that particular resource and create a pin out of it. But there's something uh, that is so much more interesting, which is um, there's, there's cases where you actually want to have the multiple versions. So suppose that you're, um, you know, that you have uh, the same analysis of home price indexes, but perhaps multiple people are working in the same data set and the data set is being overridden, why not? And if you happen to be using things like uh, GitHub, you already know that you have versions. And uh, the new feature that is available on pins uh, currently on only available in development version. So you will have to do something like uh, remotes install, install GitHub. And then you would have to say our studio pins if you want to use this feature or wait for the release of pins uh, 0 0.4. So the new feature that you have available now is you can basically um, also explore the versions of different boards. So I was mentioning that I have a GitHub board somewhere in here, which we can connect to. So we're connected into this particular board. And then uh, what we can see here is that there is multiple uh, particular uh, data sets and we can, we can check the versions of, of each of them. So uh, for that, there is a new comment called uh, pin versions. We can say Game of Thrones dialogues. And you can see that in this particular case, there's only one version. It hasn't, hasn't changed. Um, however, we can actually create different versions in, um, in this particular board. We can say pin iris, and suppose that we call this um, uh, Iris. Actually, let's let's pin first the empty cars data set and we'll call it uh, Iris and we'll we'll pin it to this board. Board equals uh, GitHub. So again, there's nothing particularly new here. We're just creating a pin. Uh, what we can do next is just go and browse it. And if we go and look at Iris, uh, you will see here that under history, uh, we have the creation of this particular data set. And in fact, for the particular CSV, for instance, um, the history doesn't, ex well, there's only one entry on the, on the history. So what we can do here is we can now change this and say, oops, uh, you know, maybe what we actually wanted to create was the Iris data set. And uh, we can say here, commit, commit equals, oops, the actual Iris data set. So what this is going to trigger is what you already know and expect from GitHub boards, which is creating a new version for this particular CSV file. Now, in this case, we're naming the commit, oops, the actual Iris dataset, which is fine. It makes sense. Uh, but then the really cool thing is that now we can explore the versions of this particular uh, dataset. And you can see that there's two versions. Uh, there organized in descending order. So the latest version is the first one. And you can see that the latest one is, oops, the actual Iris data set. So we can actually now retrieve those particular versions. So we can say uh, pin get uh, Iris, and then we can specify the version. Now, if you specify the latest version, this is the same as not specifying a version because you we uh, pins always returns by default the latest version. So as you can see here, this looks like the Iris data set, but we can also go back in time and retrieve a older version, which in this case would be the um, previous version, which should be empty cars. And as you can see, we have we have empty cars. So um, 
you can you can also do this particular example and use versions with the um, with all the boards that already support versions by default. So one of them is GitHub. The other one would be Kaggle. In this case, you can look at versions of this particular data set by the Kaggle team. And you can see there's multiple versions. And you can also use our Studio Connect, uh, which already supports versions. So we can, for instance, connect and do pin versions and have a lot of files that might not be super useful here. Um, let's actually forget about this and just create a new version. So we'll do the same thing, in, but this, this time in our Studio Connect, we're going to say uh, pin iris, and we're going to uh, we're going to pin the incorrect data set, which is empty cars. Uh, so we already have one, uh, one data set named Iris, so we're just going to call it my Iris. Or let's call it ver uh, Iris versioned, uh, just for the, uh, for the sake of it. And then we are going to repin a new data set, and in this case, it's going to be Iris. And we're just fixing it, right? We're, you know, uh, this happens all the time. We might, uh, you know, override the data set with something that we, act, when it actually changed, or perhaps it was just a mistake. And then we can explore the versions of this particular set, uh, data set, Iris version. And again, same uh, concept we're just saying, our Studio Connect. Pin versions, actually. And you can see that there's uh, two particular versions. And again, we, turn, we can retrieve the particular version that we are interested in. So I'm not going to return the latest one, but let's retrieve uh, version equals. And this would be the original version, which should be, uh, if I uh, if we did this properly, it should be empty cars, right? So yeah, we have empty cars. And then you could also go back and retrieve the current version, either explicitly by saying uh, versions equals the version or implicitly by not specifying it. So uh, there you go. That's versioning on the ports that support versions by default. So, uh, so the next question is, all right, so what happens with boards that don't support versioning? So um, it's totally up to the, uh, the, the creator of the board to decide whether version, version is something that should be supported. Uh, for the boards supported in, uh, in the pins package, uh, we decided that it would make sense to add support for versionings if you choose to. So for instance, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, this particular S3 bucket. And um, if you want to connect with uh, support for versions, in this particular case, uh, for the boards that don't support versionings out of the box, you need to opt in and uh, um, uh, uh, specify the versions equals true parameter. So for instance, let's take a look at that. So we're going to connect. And as you can see, we're uh, using versions equals true. And um, if, if you're, if, uh, if you were not to specify versions equals true, uh, versions would simply won't work. And actually, let's just let's just take a quick look, quick look at that. Uh, how does that look like? So, um, so if you already have uh, other types of boards that don't support versioning, uh, pins is just gonna keep working the way it was uh, already working. Uh, so let's try let's try to do this. Let's try to pin Iris versioned. Uh, let's see. So we're going to do this one, but we're going to put it on uh, the S3 board. And then we're going to override it. And uh, as you can see, we have the data set Iris versioned. But if we were to check the versions, uh, you can see that there's, there's simply no versions. Version is, is not available. So if you actually want to opt in to use versions, you need to register your board with versions equals true. So let's try that again, and let me just remove the uh, this particular pin. Right, so we have removed it, and let's try that again. We will um, pin first empty cars with as Iris version, and then we're gonna pin Iris, and we're gonna we're gonna try this again. We're gonna look for the versions uh, using the S3 bucket, and in this case, you can see now that there's two particular uh, versions, uh, the latest one and the previous one. Now there's, you know, you can you can um, use the versions, but it doesn't have as rich support as other boards, as you know, our Studio Connect or uh, Kaggle or GitHub. Mostly, 
because they're not uh, they're not supported out of the box in S3, but at least you get some level of um, versioning while using S3. Now, if, if you're trying to figure out how this works, it's actually quite simple. You can take a look at the uh, S3 bucket and look at Iris versioned. And uh, you can see here your usual uh, uh, data sets and your usual files. Uh, but what is new is that uh, there is a new, new folder named uh, versions that contains information for the actual versions to be uh, processed. So, um, you know, notice that, you know, the more versions you have and each time that you create a pin, uh, you will incur costs uh, by storing basically duplicate data in your uh, cloud provider, which is a pretty great trade-off if you're interested in following versions. And if not, uh, this is the reason why by default, this functionality is turned off in some of the boards. Um, now, as you can see here, this is the full version identifier of the actual data set. If you're interested in seeing the full uh, version, you can say full equals true. And basically that will give you like the full uh, kind of like version identifier. Now we don't recommend, uh, you know, using the full version uh, in a similar way as how GitHub works. Um, usually you don't need to use the full signature to actually retrieve a data set. Um, it's safe enough to use the first seven digits if you trust the particular board and why not. Um, but, you know, if you don't, you can always use a combination of either versions or the new signature parameter that allows you to retrieve particular versions. All right, as you can see, there's uh, not that many changes. Uh, this is a pretty nifty, useful feature for those of you that are interested in uh, tracking the versions of your data set. And um, yeah, and it's opt-in, nothing really changes if you're already using pins the way that we, you've been using it. Um, if you happen to be using some of the boards that already support versions, you get this feature by default on existing pins. And if not, you can opt in and make use of versioning um, on a case-by-case -case basis. All right, well, I hope this was uh, useful. And um, please um, remember that this is a feature that is uh, mostly uh, still under development and will be released on the pins 04 release. Uh, so definitely if you have features, feedback, uh, please open a GitHub issue and we will take a look and do our best to address it. Thank you.